Welcome to the 20 Minute Talk Show. I'm excited to introduce James Chamberlain, is an MBA, new MBA student here at Denver University at the MBA program. And so we've only got 20 minutes, so 20 minutes, time starts now. Thank you for joining us for the show. So what made you decide to get involved with the MBA program? Well, I knew that it was going to be a step in the right direction. I've been looking at consulting career fields, but specifically entrepreneurship as well. And getting an MBA would broaden my understanding of business so I could perform better. OK, so before you joined the MBA program, what did you do? I was a financial manager for the Air National Guard in Illinois. And before that, I was a deployment manager and air traffic controller in active duty Air Force. Oh, wow. What great experience you've had. Air Force has probably given you so much experience and a lot of resources and value to the MBA program. Do you feel it has really benefited you and you've applied a lot to the program? Absolutely. Um, airline industry is an extremely large industry and what was nice about my experience is that it was very multifaceted. So not just air traffic control, but seeing the logistics part of that and then the finance part of that gave me a much better perspective. Nice. So how has your first quarter been so far in the MBA program? <laughs> it's been pretty busy. Uh, a lot of students call it a fire hose of information, but the five-week program I think served us well because when we took as many courses as we did, um, that really helped us understand business in terms of entrepreneurship because we had a challenge to actually pitch an entrepreneurial idea. So that really helped us. Nice. Wow. So what's been your favorite class so far? I think my favorite class is data analytics because I can justify an answer I arrive at empirically, <laughs> which is easier than trying to explain a thesis. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> so your cohorts, have you developed relationships with many of them? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we come from um, a wide area geographically from all over the United States. And so when we met together at the Nature Place, we sort of all bonded because we all came here for similar reasons. Okay, do you have a lot of team projects? We do. Program? Uh, we do. So this first quarter was entrepreneurship, and then the next one is going to be a social good challenge where we're going to be consulting a social good enterprise here in Denver. Mm -hmm. Oh, amazing. Have you built a lot of good relationships among your team members? Oh, absolutely. We're actually going to continue the enterprise project, even though we're no longer supposed to do it as a deliverable on the academic side, because we think we can actually go somewhere with it. So building the team, were there any challenges? I imagine there were some, but what were some of maybe the specific challenges, or did you even have any that you'd like to share? What was cool about starting that team was they actually got to choose which team they wanted to belong to. And so after I presented my pitch, my teammates all were already very interested. And so because of that common ground, it was easy to collaborate. We all have very diverse backgrounds, but we all really liked the project we worked on. Interesting. So the team building really I mean, because I know with my team building, uh, we had, you know, a few challenges, and there were definitely some challenges on, on different parts of that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm wondering, were there specific things that you did that helped you get through the challenges through building that team? One thing we did was we met with a team mentor. And meeting with that team mentor allowed everybody to air their concerns. And when everybody had the voice to do that, we were all on the same page. So that really helped promote a better team environment. There were some concerns with each team member regarding the concept of what we were going to eventually pitch. But once we were able to address everybody's thoughts, we all arrived at the same conclusion. Right, I agree. 
that that would be a real strong part of building uh, a good team camaraderie. So what do you, uh, what have you been your takeaways or the benefits you've gotten from the MBE program so far? Um, to not be afraid of failure, really. So when we ended up pitching our idea, we didn't necessarily win, but to our surprise at the end of the event, um, several investors were happy with our service and our, our idea, and we were able to exchange information. Nice, right. So where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hopefully as a business owner. <laughs> That's the plan. What kind of business are you wanting to own? Uh, right now, there's a lot of traction with Milestone, which is an experience-based e-commerce platform. We like to call it Amazon for Adventure, where people buy goods instead of, or people buy experiences instead of goods. So it would be exciting to see that go far. Okay, so what, do you, what kind of experiences? Could you elaborate more on that? Absolutely. So we've contacted Breckenridge Brewery, a Mile High Skydiving, Aspen Flying Club, and the Denver River Water Rafting. And we're trying to just connect businesses that provide an actual experience or an event that people can partake in. And then we'll advertise those on our website. And when customers purchase that, they go and they attend the event, they actually earn milestone achievements. And when you earn a milestone achievement, that gets pushed on their Facebook, Google+, Instagram, to everyone they know, but it also provides them with reward points that are redeemable for even more experiences. What a great idea. So have you shared this idea with the MBA group? We have. Uh, I've pitched to the MBA group uh, three times in total, and they were, helped us kind of restructure the way we should present the pitch, and we actually pitched in front of investors three times so far. The first two were very academic. The last ones were actual real venture capitalists, and so all their feedback was enormously positive and really helped us mold and shape the website. So excited for you and what this journey, where this journey could take you. So I imagine there's been a lot of challenges that you're going to be facing through the years. So other than the MBA program, what do you do just outside of school? Outside of school, I, I love to play piano. That's a big passion of mine. I like to read. Um, and I, I really like mountain climbing and hiking. And so I got here recently, and the moment I got here, I had to go up Mount Elbert because that was the tallest one. And I enjoyed it a lot. It was fun. I bet it was a lot of fun mountain climbing. It must be just really great enjoyment for you. Uh, do you ever, have you ever thought about maybe uh, using your mountain climbing in the MBA program, bringing it into, your, into the program? Uh, well, it's definitely something that we wanted to include in the enterprise challenge uh, for Milestone in terms of adding it as an event that people can pursue. Nice. Uh, what, so all the activities you offer, do you mind sharing what all you're looking at so far for experiences? Sure. I'm looking at uh, skiing. I'm looking at bungee jumping. We're looking at concerts and even passive events like wine tastings because those are all different experiences. And we want to be able to serve not only the DU community of active millennials, but maybe Gen X and baby boomers who'd be interested in finishing some bucket list items that they've always thought about completing. Wonderful. Well, from your experiences in the military, I imagine you faced a lot of failures, mistakes. Do you mind sharing some of those with us? Maybe some of the, air, yeah, some of the mistakes maybe? Sure. Um, a while ago, we had to assemble a pillbox that was able to defend multiple trucks on an airport, on an airfield, for our airfield vehicles. And this was a, at first we thought it was a simple task, you know, just stack and eventually we'd have the right size and we could fit the trucks underneath it. But what had happened was the distribution of the sandbags had to be just right. And there were only about 10 of us and it needed to fit two vehicles inside. And while we were building it, 
we noticed that the area we were building in was going to be too slanted. And the officer in charge of it didn't recognize that issue. And so it was something that we had to come together on and talk to him about, which was difficult because he was under a timeline. Uh, he was under a restriction to get it completed. And once we were able to air our concerns and he kind of walked him through the, the future problems that might have, we were able to break it down and move it, which also created a significant amount of additional work for us because it was much harder to do than we first imagined. Oh, I could understand that must have been tough. Mm -hmm. But um, you, I'm assuming you learned a lot from that experience. Absolutely, that and so many others. Um, being in the military, you were constantly faced with just challenges all the time. And overcoming those challenges was just part of the job. But that's what was so likable about the job in the military, is that you were, it would, you were always presented with something new. You never knew what to expect. Nice. Oh, something that just came to mind. Um, so what's a day in the life of an MBA student to look like? Very busy. And so it's, I don't know if it should start in the morning or the night because it, it, it's very cyclical. At night, you are finishing all the work that you want to prepare in the morning. And when you wake up early in the morning, you've got all this reading that you want to be in tune with so that you can make a meaningful conversation in your classroom with the teacher. And right after you discuss all the last night's material and the morning's reading with the teacher, you're presented with new topics that you have to go home and re-engage with because every day in class is an entirely new topic that you have to almost master. So it's always preparing, it's really preparing you for the, your future because stuff is always going to be coming up. Absolutely, I agree. Okay, so Okay, so tell me about your your favorite time as an MBA student. I had a couple favorite times. I have to say the second pitch we did in the enterprise project was my favorite time. Really? Why was that? Um, when we went and did the pitch, we were very confident about it. We had a lot of teachers that showed us what we needed to accomplish. And I just felt really good about the material I was presenting. And it went very, very well. And we received very positive feedback. Everybody really liked the idea. And afterwards, uh, we engaged with a Denver entrepreneur who actually owns several businesses. And he loved the idea as well. And seeing that other people recognized uh, a positive outlook on our, on our business idea really helped our team come together more. Right. So it's really built a network from that, and which is really important. Do you agree for entrepreneurs to build, the, to build a strong network? Yes, definitely. Entrepreneurship, you know, they, they like to say uh, you can have a B idea, but if you have an A team, you'll probably get funded, you know, because people, human capital, are some of your best resources and meeting and uh, finding other entrepreneurs out there that you can work with and partner with is an invaluable asset to any startup. That's true. So marketing your idea, what are some of the approaches, uh, the approaches you've had in marketing it and some of the challenges you faced? And so we've actually built two customer profiles, Nick and Haley. Uh, Haley is your standard graduate student, about 25, 26, and she knows what she already kind of likes. She likes, you know, um, hiking, yoga, she lives an active life. And so Milestone becomes an incredible resource for her because it allows her to continue her daily life and continue her um, favorite activities, but receive rewards for doing so. Whereas Nick, we kind of profiled him as an undergrad student who's new to Denver. And when he moved here, he likes concerts. Um, he likes to ski. And so for him, Milestone becomes an incredible resource where he could find new things to do as well as receive rewards. That's a great idea. Okay, so what do you like to read just for your free time, some of your favorite reading? Well, I, I read a lot of, uh, 
I guess, journals from military officers. Um, Robin, Robert Olds, he's a, uh, he, he wasn't necessarily a general, but he could have been. He was a pilot in the Air Force, and he was an incredible leader. I also like reading just books on leadership. Um, Lincoln on Leadership is an incredible book, too, if you ever want to gather insight into what it takes to really manage a team, not in a way that treats them as an ends to a mean, but treats them as an end in themselves. Interesting. So who's your role model? Uh, what entrepreneur has inspired you, or who do you look up to? You know, I have many role models, but I don't necessarily have a specific entrepreneurial role model. I really like Henry Ford's approach. Um, I thought what he did with his factories was incredible, and how he was still able to treat his employees extremely fair. Um, and I also like uh, reading about how veterans come out of the military and end up becoming entrepreneurial in their own ways. Um, there was an individual who started a company in New York, and his company focused on recruiting people. Well, during the economic um, recession in 2008, he decided not to take a salary, and he brought all of his employees in and asked, will you all accept a 10% pay cut so nobody has to leave? And they agreed. And seeing that empathy that he had for his team really enabled his business to succeed because everybody was on the same page and felt needed and desired and useful in that company. Nice. That's a really interesting story. Okay, so I know you've uh, are very uh, disciplined in a lot of the leadership roles in, in the MBA program. So I'm, I mean, there are different disciplines. So what discipline are you looking at? I mean, that 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 it's kind of the same or different. That it's all kind of the same thing, or that MBA the MBA program is just um, that they're they're different or they're similar in how they approach things. There are different. Um, specialties that I've been looking into, and it's so incredibly hard to just pick one. In our short time here with two years, I, I think I'm probably going to choose data skills and data analytics because I feel like those hard tools accompany soft tools very well. Um, but at the same time, a certificate in leadership would also be pretty invaluable. I think that in order to really succeed, you just you have to have an equal balance of the two so that you can take an approach, a good approach, based off of good information. Right. So the information from, from the study and, the, and, the, and from, what you, from the analytics and what you study, you take that information. I mean, what's your favorite approach? My favorite approach is just to use those analytical skills to be able to find data, analyze data, and then show people the different answers you come up with. You know, if you can prove something analytically, um, it makes it a lot easier for people to adopt. And if, it's, if they see that it's not coming from a bias, um, they're more likely to accept it. Oh, okay, I understand. Okay. I would love to actually be in the military and just uh, to be a part of uh, that and get gain some of that leadership experience that you learn from it. There was a lot of leadership courses. They um, they promoted that all the time. You know, from day one, they break you down to build you up to make you a better leader and more effective leader. And that was the greatest takeaway that I had from that experience. But. Even in the civilian wow. world, you can, you can still obtain those skills. Absolutely. OK, so we've got 40 seconds left. So tell me, uh, explain yourself in one sentence. Wow. Um, an entrepreneurial, um, intellectually curious person who just wants to spend life discovering things. Great. 
I like that, a curious entrepreneur. Well, thank you for joining us. And I do wish for the best, best for all your future endeavors mm -hmm. and all the challenges that come your way. And I'm excited for all the people you'll meet in the future as well. Good luck with all that. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate this time. Thank you.